So in terms of how they work, let's say we start with two parties, party A and party B. These could be advertisers, agencies, publishers, walled gardens, basically anyone that has value adding first party data. Party A instantiates or sets up a data clean room instance. Now, this is an important point because a clean room isn't a database that gets reused over and over again by different parties. Um, generally speaking, a new DCR instance is created for each set of collaborators. And most clean rooms can support more than two parties, but to keep things straightforward, we'll stick to just two parties for the examples in this presentation. So once a clean room is set up, the first step is data ingestion. Um, this is where the collaborating parties upload the data sets that they want to use into the DCR. The data sets can be in a variety of different formats like email addresses, device IDs, and other first party identifiers. And they can come from wherever that data is stored. So CRM, uh, cloud data warehouse, um, CDPs, etc. And at this stage, the data that's uploaded is generally anonymized or pseudonymized to protect individual identities. So as an example, um, email addresses can be hashed to obscure the original information while maintaining the ability to match records across data, data sets. The next step is data matching. So once the data is ingested, the clean room software processes it to enable uh, matching and analysis. And this involves aligning data sets from different sources based on some kind of shared identifier. And before the actual data matching takes place, privacy enhancing technologies or pets for short, which um, we'll have a section later on that goes deeper into different kinds of pets. They're applied to ensure that the data remains private even during as well as after the matching process. To match data sets between the two parties, a common identifier or join key is required. Um, DCRs generally accept a, a wide range of identifiers, and this can be everything from hash PII like email addresses or phone numbers to industry universal IDs and ID graphs. So things like UID2, live ramps, ramp ID, ID5, everything like that. But no matter which option is chosen, pets will be used to ensure that the underlying data remains hidden and can't be reverse engineered. Um, and then from there, after data matching, the next step is data collaboration, which really refers to um, whatever the agreed upon use case between the two parties are. And after matching, the, the clean room enables different types of analyses and use cases from the combined data sets. This can range from simple aggregation, so like counting the number of match records between the data sets, to more complex analytics or data science applications, things like audience segmentation, uh, propensity analyses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The results are aggregated to varying degrees, um, and this depends on the clean room itself and the clean room settings. Um, and what we mean by aggregation is that that means the individual user information isn't revealed. And differential privacy techniques, um, which is a specific kind of pet, are applied here to add noise to the data or query results. So if you ever hear of a clean room um, injecting noise, that's an application of differential privacy. And that ensures, again, that uh, the output doesn't compromise individual privacy. And then um, the final step involves outputting the processed and analyzed data in a form that's useful for marketing applications. This can include audience segments being sent to ad tech buying platforms for media targeting. It can mean generated insights that can be used in a BI platform for different types of data visualization. It could be uh, using the match data to build or run models against. But the key is that any data or insights that are extracted from the DCR are compliant with privacy regulations and don't reveal any PII. And oftentimes the aggregated outputs are syndicated or sent to different platforms. And this can be either using a native in integration the Cleanroom has with other ad tech or MarTech platforms, or it can be via um, API integrations. And you can see several examples um, organized uh, by use case category on the slide here. And a really important concept um, here is that the outputs that party A, again, party A is the one who set up and created the clean room. The outputs that party A sends for use are aggregations of their own data. Um, so despite being a collaborator, data from party B is not actually combined with party A's data. Rather, what this means is that party A now has more insight into what segments of their own data can be used for their desired use case. 
And this might sound a little counterintuitive, but don't worry, we'll have a section where we cover that concept in more detail. So if it doesn't make sense now, it'll, don't worry, it'll make more sense later on.